Hi and welcome to the Tristan channel and in this video in my occult series I want to tell you about the legendary Pamela Coleman Smith, Queen of the Tarot. Pamela Coleman Smith, nicknamed Pixie, was a British artist, illustrator, writer, publisher and occultist. She is best known for her, sorry, for illustrating the Rider Waite Tarot deck, also called the Rider Waite Smith or Waite Smith deck for, uh, for Arthur Edward Waite. This tarot deck became the standard among tarot card readers and remains the most widely used today. Smith also illustrated over 20 books, wrote two collaborations of Jamaican folklore, edited two magazines and ran the Green Sheaf Press, a small press focused on women writers. Smith was born at 28 Belgrave Road in Pimilco, part of central London. She was the only child of a merchant from Brooklyn, New York, before it was part of New York City. Charles Edward Smith, son of Brooklyn Mayor Cyrus Porter Smith, and his wife Corrine Coleman, sister of the painter Samuel Coleman. <clears throat> The family was based in Manchester for the first decade of Smith's life, but they moved to Jamaica when Charles Smith took a job in 1989 with the West India Improvement Company, a financial syndicate involved in extending the Jamaican railroad system. Smith lived in the capital Kingston for several years, travelling to London and New York. By 1893, Smith had m moved to Brooklyn at the age of 15. She enrolled at the Pratt Institute, which had been founded six years earlier. There she studied art under Arthur Wesley Dow, painter, printer, maker, photographer and influential arts educator. Her mature drawing style shows clear traces of the visionary qualities of fine de soleil symbolism and the romanticism of the preceding arts and crafts movement. I butchered that one. While Smith was in art school, her mother died in Jamaica in 1896. Smith herself was ill on and off during these years and in the end left Pratt in 1870. 1879 without a degree. She became an illustrator. Some of her first projects included the illustrated verses of William Butler Yeats, a book on actress Dame Ellen Terry by Bram Stoker, and two of her own books, which can be Fair and Fair of Vanity. In 1899, her father died leaving Smith at the age of 21, Without either parent, she returned to England that year, continuing to work as an illustrator and branching out into theatrical design for a miniature theatre. In London, she was taken under the wing of the Lyceum Theatre Group, led by Terry, who is said to have given her the nickname Pixie. Henry Irving and Bram Stoker and travel and travelled with them around the country working on costumes and stage design. In 1901 she established a studio in London and held a weekly open house for artists, authors, actors and others involved with the arts. Arthur Ransom then in his early 20s described one of these at one of these, described one of these, at home evenings and the curious artistic circle around Smith in his 1907 Bohemia in London. <clears throat> Smith wrote and illustrated two books about Jamaican folklore, Anansi Stories 1899 and Chim Chim Folk Stories from Jamaica 1905. These books included Jamaican versions of tales involving the traditional African folk figure 
Anansi the Anansi the spider. <coughs> she also continued her illustration work, taken on projects for William Butler Yeats and his brother, the painter Jack Yeats. Sorry, Yeats. <coughs> She illustrated Bram Stoker's last novel, The Lair of the White Worm, in 1911, and Ellen Terry's book on Diaghilev's Ballets Russes, the Russian ballet in 1913. <clears throat> Smith supported the struggle for the right to vote, and through the suffragette at Atlier, a collective of professional illustrators, she contributed artwork to further the cause of women's suffrage in Great Britain. Additionally, Smith donated her services for more poster designs and toys to the Red Cross during World War One. In nineteen oh three, Smith launched her own magazine under the title The Green Sheaf, with contributions by Ye Yates um Christopher St. John Christabel Marshall, Cecile French, A. E. George William Russell, Gordon Craig Ellen, Terry Sun, Dorothy Ward, John Todd Hunter, and others. The Green Sheaf survived for a little over a year, a total of 50, sorry, 13 issues. Discouraged by the Green Sheaf's lack of financial success, Smith shifted her efforts towards setting up a small press in London in 1904. She established the Green Sheaf Press, which published a variety of novels, poems, fairy tales and folk tales un until at least 1906, mostly by women writers. In 1907, Alfred Stein Steinglitz gave an exhibition of Smith's paintings in New York at his little galleries of the photo Succession, also known as Galleria 291, making Smith the first painter to have a show at what had been until then a gallery devoted exclusively to the photography, the to the photographic avant garde. Steiglitz was intrigued by Smith's synthetic sensibilities in this period. Smith would paint visions that came to her while listening to music. The show was successful enough that Steiglitz issued a platinum print portfolio of 22 of her paintings and showed her work twice in twice more in 1908 and 1909. Some Smith's works that did not sell remain with Steiglitz and ended up in the Steiglitz Georgia O'Keeffe archive at Yale University. Yates introduced Smith to the hermetic, hermetic, hermetic order of the Golden Dorn, which she joined in 1901 and in the process met weight when the Golden Dorn splintered due to personality conflicts. Smith moved, moved with weight to the independent and recited Sorry, ratified right of the Golden Dawn or Holy Order of the Golden Dawn. In 1909, Waite commissioned Smith to produce a tarot deck with appeal to the world of art, and the result was the un unique Waite Smith tarot deck, published by William Ryder and son of London and son and sorry, William Ryder and son of London, and endured as the world's most popular 78 card tarot deck. This an invocative card the cards depicted four scenes with figures and symbols on all of the cards, including the pipes and Smith's distinctive drawings have become the basis for the design of many subsequent packs. Apart from book illustration projects and the tarot deck, her art found little in the way of commercial outlets after her early success with Steiglitz in New York. Several examples of her works done in gauche were collected by her cousin, the American Sherlock Holmes actor William Gillette, 
and may be found today prominently displayed in his castle in Connecticut. Hmm, castle. <laughs> in 1911, Smith converted to Roman Catholicism after the end of the First World War. Smith received an inheritance from an uncle that enabled her to lease a house on the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall, an area popular with artists. For income, she established a vacation home for Catholic priests in a neighbouring house. Her longtime friend Nora Lake joined her in Cornwall and helped to run the vacation home. After several years of financial difficulty, Smith, le Smith left the Lizard and relocated first to Exeter in 1939, then in Bud in the early 1940s. Although she continued writing and illustrating, she was unable to find publishers for her work, probably due to changes in public taste following the First World War. Smith died in her apartment at the Benekulen house in Bud on 18th of September 1951. Her possessions were auctioned off to pay her debts. The location of her grave, grave site is unknown, but it is likely that she was buried in an unmarked grave in St Michael's Cemetery in Bud. And the overall symbolic system because Waite was not an artist himself, he commissioned Smith to create the actual deck. It's likely that Smith worked from Waite's written and verbal instructions rather than from sketches, that is from detailed descriptions of the desired designs. This is how illustrators often work and as a commercial illustrator, Smith would probably have been comfortable with such a working process. It appears that Waite provided detailed instructions, mainly or exclusively for the major arcana, and simple lists of meanings for the minor arcana, or pip cards, Thus, the memorable scenes of the minor arcana owe largely to Smith's own invention. The minor arcana are indeed one of the notable achievements of this deck, as most earlier tarot decks, especially those of the Marseilles, Marcelli, sorry, type, have extremely simple pip cards. Smith's innovative illustrations for the minor arcana with their rich symbolism made the Waite Smith deck a widely imitated model for other tarot decks. Smith and Waite drew on a number of sources as inspirations for the deck's designs. In particular it appears that Waite took his inspiration for the Trumps mainly from the French tarot of Marciels, although the oldest date from the 16th century, his model was probably a Marciels deck from the 18th century. It is not unlikely that other Marciels type Italian tarot decks from the 18th or 19th century were used as additional models for the pips it appears that Smith drew mainly on the 15th century Italian Sola Buscataro. The Three of Swords, for example, clearly shows the congruity between the two decks. <clears throat> in addition, there is evidence that some figures in the deck are portraits of Smith's friends, notably actress, <clears throat> actress Ellen Terry, the Queen of Wands, and Florence Farr, the world. Smith completed the art for the deck in the sixth, sixth months between April and October 1909. This is, a, this is a short period of time for an artist to complete some 80 pictures. 
the number claimed by Smith in their letter to Steiglitz in 1909, and corresponding almost exactly to the standard 78 tarot, <coughs> 78 card tarot deck. The illustrations were mostly like done in pen and ink, possibly over a pencil under drawing. The original drawings are are lost, so it, this cannot be determined with certainty <coughs> at present. They were either coloured with a watercolour by Smith or coloured by someone else after the fact. An exhibition of Smith's art entitled to all believers, the art of Pamela Cole. Coleman Smith was held in the United States in 1975. It was sponsored by the University of Delaware and the Delaware Art Museum in association with the Delaware chapter of the Victorian Society in America. The exhibition was held at the Delaware Art Museum 11th of September to 19th of October and the Art Museum Princeton University from 4th of November to 7th of December an exhibition <clears throat> an exhibition Georgia O'Keeffe and the woman of the Steiglitz Circle was held in 2007 and 2008 it was at three museums the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum in Santa Fe New Mexico the High Museum of Art in Atlanta Georgia and the San Diego Museum of art in San Diego, California. <coughs> Excuse me, fruit's getting a bit dry. <coughs> the exhibition includes works by Smith and other women artists who were active in the art and photography scene prior to O'Keeffe. Their works helped to put O'Keeffe's art in the context of the time. The exhibition was based and the scholarly book Modernism and the Feminine Voice, O'Keefe and the Women of Steiglitz Circle uh, by Catherine Pine, which contains a chapter on Smith. In 2019, the Brooklyn campus of the Pratt Institute Libraries held an exhibition of Smith's work entitled Pamela Coleman Smith, Life and Work. The exhibition includes books, prints, reproductions of paintings and illustrations, tarot decks and photographs. Well, Bobby, I hope you found this video insightful. If so, hit the like and if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe because it'd be great to have you here. And until the next video, take care and be well.